Hello dear children and welcome to mathematics class for class 7. Today we'll be starting with a new chapter that is chapter 11, perimeter and area. Now uh, in a uh, previous cl class we have already learned about what perimeter is, what area is. Now today we'll do a quick recap before we move on to the uh, sorry to the main concepts. So <clears throat> today in this lesson we are going to learn about the various formulae used for perimeter and area of different closed figures. Okay, so perimeter first. Perimeter is simply the addition of all the sides, or we can say the total length of all the sides. Let's say we have this rectangle here. Let's say that the rectangle has length two, breadth one. So when you are asked to find the, uh, the perimeter of this rectangle, we simply add all the sides so that 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1. So it will come in this manner, 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1. So this is the basic concept. The concept of perimeter is that it is the addition of all the sides. But in this chapter, we're going to learn about different formulae for different figures, okay? Uh, so this is the <coughs> perimeter and for area, it simply means the total space occupied. The total space occupied or the boundary, the space enclosed by the boundaries, okay? Here the boundaries are the, your sides. So 2, 1, 2 and 1. These are your boundaries, all right? So we have already learned that. Perimeter simply means total length of the closed figure. Or we can also say the boundary, right? Perimeter means the total length of the closed figure or boundary. So we have already seen this as an example. So if it is a square, 2, 2, 2, 2, if you add all the sides, you will get the perimeter, all right? So perimeter simply means the total length, okay? And, <coughs> excuse me, the next one is area. So we have already learned about area also. Area simply means the space occupied occupied by the figure, by the closed figure. So here, the area will be this, the inside part, the inside of the square. So this is the part that is enclosed by this closed figure, okay? So this part is your area, the inside. The addition of all the sides gives you your perimeter. So children, this is all about your perimeter and your area. So let's go into detail with the different closed figures. So we have learned about the perimeter and the area. Let's continue with the units. So in perimeter, when you talk about units, they're like a different centimeter, meter, kilometer. So for perimeter, you simply have meter or centimeter or kilometer or millimeter, okay? For area, you have meter square, centimeter square, kilometer square, millimeter square. So depending on what unit you are using, for area, it will be square. For centimeter, uh, sorry, for perimeter, it will be simply M or meter, centimeter, kilometer, millimeter. For area, meter square, centimeter square, kilometer square, millimeter square. Okay, children? So this is all about your units, the units that we will be using. Now let's look at the different types of figures that we are going to learn about today. So the first one will be square. A square, okay? A square, you know that in a square, all the sides are equal. That means if this is 3, it will all be 3, right? So, 
the formula, the first formula for perimeter of square is now addition of all the sides. Okay, we can also write like this: side plus side plus side plus side. So if you look at this example, we can write the. It'll come as three plus three plus three plus three. Addition of all the sides. But for formula, we will be using a different representation. So for perimeter of square, we are going to represent in this manner. There are four sides, okay? So four into side, all right? So for square, we're going to write four into side. So this is your formula for perimeter of square, okay? So let me write it again. Perimeter of square is equal to 4 into side, okay? So if you take an example of this, you're going to write 4 into, for one side, the length is 3. So 4 into 3 is 12, all right? And if it is centimeter, if it is in meter, it'll be meter. If it is in millimeter, it'll be millimeter, okay? So <coughs> this is the first part, the perimeter. The next is area of square. Now we have already discussed area means the space occupied by the figure, right? This space, okay? So this, we are going to write like this side into side. So area of square for any uh, square of any length, we're going to use side into side. So if you take example for this, we have all the sides as three, so side three into another side is three. So you're getting three into three is nine. Now here, here in the first example, we use centimeter, so let's use centimeter again. So here we're going to write the unit as centimeter square, okay? So this is the difference for perimeter and area in unit. In perimeter, we have already discussed only cm, centimeter. In area, centimeter square. Okay, children? So this is the first part. This is about the formula for square. Now, please memorize all this. You have to keep all this in mind so that when we solve the questions, it will be easier for you. So the next figure we're going to learn about is rectangle. We have all heard of rectangle. We have been discussing about all these different shapes in our previous classes also. So rectangle, let's draw an example of a rectangle. Let's say this is your length and this is your breadth. So in rectangle, what happens is opposite sides are equal. So if this is length L, the opposite side will also be L. If this is breadth B, the opposite side of B will be B. So in short, if this is 3, this will also be 3. If B is 2 here, this will also be 2. Now, <coughs> for perimeter of rectangle, perimeter of rectangle. For perimeter of rectangle also, we have to add L plus B plus L plus B, okay? Addition of all the sides. So to cut it short, there's a formula, two eyes of L plus B. That means two times of L plus B. L plus B, L plus B. There are two L plus Bs. So we're writing two times of L plus B. So if you take the example of this, here L is three, B is two. So I'm going to write two bracket, this L. In, in place of this L, I will write three. Plus, in place of this B, I will write 2. So, 2 into, if there is no sign between the number and the bracket, it shows that it is multiply. Please remember that. 3 plus 2 is 5. 2 into 5 is 10. So, if I use centimeter for perimeter, you are going to get 10 centimeter. That means, 3 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2 gives you 10. Okay? For area... 
area of <coughs> rectangle area of rectangle is length into breadth that means this into this okay it will give you this part All right so this is your area to find this area multiply l into breadth so if you take this example l is 3 b is 2 so when you multiply this 2 3 into 2 6 if i'm using centimeter it will be centimeter square okay children so this is about rectangle Let's look at the next figure that is parallelogram. Parallelogram. So in parallelogram, the main feature characteristic of this parallelogram is that opposite sides are parallel, okay? This is parallel to this. This is parallel to this, all right? These two are parallel. These two are parallel. Parallel means they will never touch each other. Okay, you produce this line; it's going to keep going. It's 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 never going to meet. They are never going to meet. They're going to move along in a straight path, and they will never intersect each other. Okay, so this is a parallelogram. For parallelogram, the area area of parallelogram is same thing <clears throat> here we have base okay so this is your base all right this is your base into height height so b is for base h is for height now we know that this is the base but there's no height given here so to find the height what we do is we draw a perpendicular line here okay perpendicular means this angle should be 90 degree all right so from this point this line a 90 degree line should be for uh, mad so this gives you your height all right so <coughs> area of parallelogram is simply base into height the base is this and the height we have already seen how we got the height so this is about the area of parallelogram. Now for perimeter, I'm not going to write because perimeter of a parallelogram, you simply add all the sides. There's no specific formula for this. Simply add addition, okay? Add all the four sides, all right? The next figure is triangle. Now we know triangle. Triangle has three sides okay so for triangle also when you are asked to find the perimeter you simply add all the sides okay add all the three sides all right now to find the area area of triangle we write half into b is for base base into height similarly just as we did for parallelogram make a 90 degree angle over here it'll be a perpendicular to the base so when we say perpendicular to base that means this line is at 90 degree to the base okay so this will give you your height all right children so this is about the area of triangle half into base into height okay children so you have to memorize all these things so that when you solve problems it's, it'll be very easy for you okay once you understand the or once you know the various formulae here that we are discussing if you memorize them if you know them by heart it'll be very easy for you to solve all the questions the next is circle we all know circle right so in circle there is a center point we keep our compass here and we draw right the place where you keep your compass is your center okay this is your center and if i draw from the center to the any point of a, on a circle this is called your radius or r all right 
now this is your radius and if you draw a line connecting one point on the circle to the other side of the circle and your line passes through the center all right if your line passes through your center then this line is called your diameter okay diameter in short we can also write it as d and in short we can also say diameter this diameter is two times of radius or we can also say radius is half of diameter that means see from radius if i join continue the line it forms the diameter right so same as diameter but half of diameter all right so this is about circle the different names now for circle there is no parameter instead well, i mean sorry uh, instead of parameter we call it as circumference okay in place of perimeter we call it as circumference of a circle all right so circumference of a circle is 2 pi r i'm sure this is a new character for you it's called pi all right it's called pi now this pi is always equal to 22 by 7 all right or 3.14 okay so wherever this pi comes whenever you use pi you will always write 22 by 7 in place of pi okay or 3.14 but it depends on what you are going to how you are going to solve it so mostly we are going to use this pi is equal to 22 by 7 and area area is equal to pi r square that means area of circle is equal to pi r square r square means r is multiplied two times okay let's say if the r if r is 2 22 by 7 in place of pi into r square means two times or we can write r into r in place of r i'm writing 2 so 2 into 2 okay so this is how you will find the area all right the last topic is semicircle. Semicircle. Semicircle simply means half of a full circle. Meaning your uh, semicircle will look like this. Half, okay? Half of the circle. Now this is called your diameter, right? From one point to another, right? From one point of a circle to the other point of a circle, by passing through the center point okay so this is your diameter and now for a formula for this is if you are asked to find perimeter okay perimeter of semicircle of semicircle now look at the curved part if you complete it it will come as a full circle but we know that circumference of a full circle is how much? 2 pi r. But we have only half of it, right? So half into. So 2 and 2 we cancel, okay? So what am I getting? We are getting pi r, right? So this is pi r. What about this? Simply this pi r plus d. Let's denote it by small d. d plus pi r. That means d plus pi r gives you the total length of the semicircle so this is all about perimeter of circle and the different formulas now there will be different type of questions okay in the uh, exercises we'll be coming across all those different types of uh, questions but the main focus our main focus should be on learning about the different formulae that we have discussed today so please uh, try to understand how they are developed how uh, you know uh, you have to buy uh, keep it you know in mind you have to understand you have to memorize all these formulae so that when we solve the problems it's going to be very easy for you once you understand this okay just as we say it in mathematics 
put the formula, get the answer, right? So I'll see you again in the next class. We'll continue with the exercises. So till then, please take care and stay safe.